evening, everybody. Welcome to the Skya Show. I'm Dr. Simon Atkins, and it's a sincere pleasure to have you join us this evening. Alrighty then, let's get straight into it. Alrighty, salutes live from good old the South Coast, Montevideo, Uruguay. It's April 6, 2015. It is a real delight to have you with us. And we are growing exponentially every week with fantastic viewers like yourself who want to learn a little bit more. We're also posting all shows now on Show dot com and i think we are on show 34 tonight whoo i tell you you got to open your mind for this one we're going to talk about what's the biggest lie of nasa what are they really hiding from us of course maybe it's a ton of stuff since well the initial days that nasa began and maybe even before that what shape is the world now you know, you talked to me five years ago, I probably would have said, look, it's a globe, done deal. But as the vibration of the planet awakens and we evolve with our thinking, new thinkers have come out of the woodwork, so to speak. Maybe I can even include myself on that. But we've got a very special guest tonight, Mark Sargent, who is going to talk to us about the real shape, potentially, of Earth. What the heck is it? And we've got a lot of images to show, so we're going to go at a rapid pace. But please feel free to join us in the chat and ask us your questions. Mark, a very good evening to you. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Simon. Thanks for having me. Well, beautiful. You've been doing a lot of shows, uh, especially yeah. nationwide in the U.S. And tell me literally about how the reaction has been to you putting out a lot of material about so-called flat earth theory most of it has been very very positive uh all, all the emails that i get uh, the phone calls i get you know here here at my place very positive uh, there are you know that i have caused some ripples in the flat earth society <laughs> as some people have probably guessed and you know I'm, I'm trying to do what i can to patch that up but you know it's a, it's a natural thing because i came you know apparently out of nowhere you know i've only been doing this eight weeks and uh, right. it's been an interesting ride. Yeah, I mean, you have come out of the woodwork. I mean, what's your background to uh, be able to say, you know, these types of things? I want to basically get some credibility up here that, you know, we're not two crazy guys uh, just, sure. you know, be e eating wood and we've got, you know, like a termite or wood in our brains here. What's your background? Uh, my background's in the software industry. Okay. Uh, I come from a heavy tech background to where I've, I've done just about everything out here in Boulder, Colorado mm. regarding tech, you know, uh, tech, tech support teams, data mining, software developer. Okay. But in the back of that, I did a lot of conspiracy stuff. You know, I nothing really on YouTube oh, right. and, I didn't, and I didn't do any websites, but I was into the conspiracy thing for a number of years. And as I mentioned in, in previous things that I've, I've talked about, I got to the point where there was literally only one book left on the shelf. And it was a book I refused, absolutely refused to look at right. for years, uh, which was the Flat Earth slash Enclosed World slash Truman Show model. There you go. Because, because I thought it's, it's silly. And uh, I looked at it starting about nine months ago, dug into it really, really deep, and the more I looked at it, the more I realized it just became more and more credible. You know, I tried to debunk it. That's I went in trying to snuff it out. You know, yeah. just say, okay, anybody that's posting anything on flat Earth is nuts. Right. And the well, more it's hard to do, isn't it? I mean, look, you it know, is I'm, hard to do. I'm soon publishing a uh, second volume of Skya, uh, whereby there's a chapter on cancer cures. All right. And I've got all kinds of doctors telling me, you know, you put that out, you're going to be in big trouble. And I said, why shouldn't I if I have the proof that there is a cure to cancer? Now, yeah. we won't talk about that tonight, Mark, but it has been hidden from us due to money. 
And maybe you can, in some of the answers that I ask, uh, the questions I ask you and some of the things that are coming out from people on the blog, maybe you can mention this. But look, you know, just to the, or I should say this way, just to the left of me, I've got, how do we know what we are told is true? All right. <laughs> and this is really one of the chief questions. I mean, it goes to 9-11. It goes to the Boston bombing. It goes on about what's happening in the Ukraine right now. Some people will say nothing's happening. And yet other people are saying there's staged people, including military, that are just trying to invoke war and things like that. Yeah. So I think it's really important to basically go to, you know, here you are in Egypt, right? What, what the hell were you doing out in Egypt anyway? Uh, <laughs> after uh, the 2009 stock market crash, oh, yeah. uh, my company yeah, had, had some real problems. And so uh, the, my boss told oh, me gosh. that if, if, we, if we go down, if we go down in flames, you should take that trip to Egypt you always wanted to do. So that's what I did. You know, we went down shortly after that, and and I went to Egypt. And that picture right there, the, the the pyramids are literally about thirty yards in front of me, and I'm trying to figure them out. Wow, wow. Well, you know, look for everybody out there. We're going to go through a number of different images, probably over thirty images tonight, to add to the show's credibility. And one of the big pictures is the pyramids. Um, I have. Uh, found over the last eight years in doing medical studies that pyramids actually have a power to cure disease. And if you go down into research about the king's chamber out there in Egypt, you find out that they weren't really a burial place. They were there because people were living there and actually living hundreds of years uh, long. Uh, because they, they were able to cure every disease. And there's now something called pyramid shape power and if you build a pyramid at 51.83 degrees and sit in it for an hour a day, you can actually cure many diseases. And people are like, oh, come on, Simon. I mean, you know, like you're having, people are, their first instinct is to say, bah humbug, I haven't heard it, so it's got to be false. Yeah. And so the whole point I'd like to bring out in the beginning of this is, look, you and I are not doing this because we want to label ourselves crazy. We want to get out there some information that we really think is going to help people and drive the consciousness higher, correct? Yeah, yeah. This was the, I tried to tell my friends and family this. I'd like, look, this is the last thing I thought I'd be doing in 2015 was backing the, the, the flat earth movement. Yeah. Never in a million years did I think that this was going to get as, tr as much traction as it did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, you know, you just mentioned the, the Truman Show. I think yeah. that everybody out there just thought that that was an incredible movie and it stunned them because it really yeah. moved their minds. But th the point is, I think, from all this, Mark, is we got to get people thinking beyond that. Okay, so, yeah, so you enjoyed the movie, but what does it mean to you? What if we really are in this kind of, what, this closed box? Yeah, yeah. If you... It, and I talked about it in one of the uh, one of the clues I did. If you took the Truman Show, which was really only you know less than twenty miles wide, and kept expanding it and expanding it to the point where it was thousands of miles yes. wide, then you don't need actors. You don't need no. really anything. After a few generations, it runs on its own. All you have to do is hide the edges and hide the roof, and that's that's all you could hear. You know, that's once right. You that. and, and ladies and gentlemen, what Mark's referring to is he did a number of clues. I think it goes up to about 10 or 11. You're, you're counting 11. 11. And yeah. these are clues about the planet. And it basically says that, you know, if you get an intelligent mammal, whether it's an elephant or a whale or human being, and you set up a perimeter, they're going to go to the edges like a mouse does in a cage. But yeah. if you expand that cage, to the point where it's thousands of miles, let's say 8,000 miles wide, you are not going to necessarily get the majority of people go into the edge just to find out what happens. They're going to take it for granted saying, okay, well, there's an edge there. Well, you know, we've heard it on the news or whatever. We've read it in a book, so we accept it. Yeah. But what's really interesting, Mark, and I want to get to this tonight for sure, yeah. is as we look at this supposed image of where we live on planet Earth in front of us, Yep. None of us out there can prove that this is really the case. And the big question remains is why is Antarctica militarized and why are the signs down there saying you cannot go on this unless, uh, you know, you get permission from the military or the government? Yeah, which means they're not going to give it to you. Which means yeah. they're not going <laughs> to give it to you. 
So yeah. look, ladies and gentlemen, this is what you grew up with. All right, it's one globe picture that you have been shown by NASA. NASA controls everything out in space. Yep. And what's really interesting is this next image. Mark, can you explain who this is and what's going on here? This is Matt Boylan. His YouTube channel is called The NASA Channel. And uh, he's got a really, really interesting backstory, and I know we have a lot of time to talk about it, but check out his stuff. But what he's showing here is that that image that you showed previously was used over and over and over again in different parts of the Internet and different parts of textbooks. All they did was they would flip it upside down, they would change the contrast, they would enhance the color, and they would basically, you know, it was like using the same dress for you know, you know, trying to disguise yeah. it every time you were out there, and uh, he picked up on it really, really quickly because he's a photorealist painter, and uh, and you know, if you believe his story, and I do, that used to work for NASA as a contract painter at one point. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me show you something. Going back to this, what yeah. color is my jacket? Uh, it is. <laughs> are we gonna do the dress thing? It is brown. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Now, if you were with me right here, right now, and look, I can only take my word for it. Maybe my dog can tell you, but it is navy blue. Here's my point. How do we know what we are told is true? All Excellent right. Point. I've got yeah. a blue jacket on, but because I'm using a chroma screen, the green and the blue change it to brown somehow. We tried to get it to blue. It doesn't work. You're seeing a brown jacket. Point taken. You yeah. guys, the whole majority of the audience is seeing brown but it's really blue. And my point going back to this is, look, when you see Earth, how do we know that this is it? I'm telling, I'm showing you one thing, but what is in reality is completely something different. Yeah. And so this is the angle that we must be thinking from. And when you said about the reversing of the image, this is true. NASA oh, yeah. took this cloud over South, America, South Africa and reversed it and showed it as a completely separate image. But somebody yep. caught it. And that guy's name again was Matt, Matt Boylan. Boylan. And yeah. by the way, talk to us because you're a data expert or a computer renditioning expert about yeah. CGI. What is this all about CGI rendering and imaging? Well, you know, it was, it was strange because that original image with that weird crescent-shaped cloud was really the only thing you could find on the Internet all the way into the mid-2000s. And... After that, out of desperation, and you know, luckily for like Google Earth and other other companies that came out there, they started rendering Earth images in strips. To where, if you go on the internet right now and yeah. you Google the Earth from space, ninety percent of what you see are composite images. Uh, the original picture of Earth uh, that was on the iPhones, which you would think would be an actual image, no, that was a computer rendered image. Incredible. Um, and and because we've gotten so good with Photoshop and and CGI, we can do a lot more. So where people, it just didn't, it didn't, it didn't process with them. It's like okay, you know, no NAS images, no NAS images, ton of computer generated images, but they don't notice the difference. So it, it was it was lost in the shuffle. Yeah, and that's Matt Boylan's point is that you know he used to work for NASA. Yep. as a consultant in yep. imagery and he was yep. so good at what he did is that some of the national officials apparently now this is his story but they yep. apparently told him certain things you know over beer or whatever mm -hmm. and then he left and he's out telling people exactly what you're doing let's yeah. move on this okay. is how we've seen since well since i can remember in elementary school the Ever. usual 1589 yep. map. You may be saying 1589, Simon. Uh, yeah, that's the Makeda projection. Yep. And what's what's interesting about this map to you, Mark? Oh, everything. I mean, first, this is the only map that has been used in the United States schools since we've had a country up here in the United States. But what's interesting, the thing that sticks out other than Antarctica being so ginormous on the bottom is that Greenland is about the same size as Africa. Yep. And I noticed that as a child. But in truth, this map is not accurate. And any scientist will tell you this. It is not even close to being proportionally correct as far as the size of the countries go. That's right. It, and and they have tried to correct it for years, and they cannot – well, we'll talk about it in a second. They can't right. introduce the correct map into schools. Right. And so every scientist that knows uh, the actual 
latitude, longitude knows that Greenland is not, correct, not as yeah. big as Africa. And I want to move on. This yeah. is a different projection. Now, look, if you go to Wikipedia, which a lot of people love because it's simple, yeah. shows about 25 different projections yep. around the plan of the planet. And yep. what's what's the main difference on this one? Well, something changed. Well, yeah, it is the correct proportions. You know, it's the closest thing we've got to an, an actual accurate proportional map. And so you see Greenland in its correct proportions, which is 17 times smaller than Africa. South America is way bigger than Europe. Europe is tinier and it moves up closer to the top. Yep. Uh, you know, the, the joke about Germany being, you know, it's actually Germany's towards the top of the map. Um, you know, America is stretched. Australia is stretched. Africa is, you know, is, is massive. It's, it, this is the map that should be in schools and they won't do it because they consider it to be, a, you know, a jar to the system. You know, it's like, well, yep. no, no, they're comfortable with the normal map. So they won't even show you this map. Well, what's really interesting is a buddy down in Uruguay sent me a picture, uh, like a little movie skit this afternoon, saying that they never wanted Africa to show the real size because it was something about social equanimity, like the, yeah. the amount of uh, attention that Africa gets. They didn't want Africa being much bigger than the United States because yeah. the, the U.S. was an economic power. They never wanted Africa as an economic power, so they dis. I guess uh, diminished it in yeah. size. The, the, yeah. There's a lot of history to this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a top versus bottom world. Uh, you know. You know. No, you know. North versus south, and Africa is is a massive continent. Massive. South America is a massive continent. Yes. Yes. And uh, you know, and it's and it is European views that have shaped the map that we currently have. Right. And now look at this. All right. So the blue one with the black uh, sort of uh, lines is the Makeda projection. Yeah. And the uh, Gold Peters one is in green because I wanted people to see this. Look at the size difference of Greenland and look at how Africa just is expanding. But it's not expanding. That The green one is the correct size. Yeah. Yeah. That's brilliant. That's a, that's a great map. I mean, it's really incredible. And, and you know, look, we're always going to get people – uh, you know, saying, well, wait, how come I've never seen this? That's because you've had an education where they boxed you in. They didn't want you escaping, thinking out of the box. And this is where the evolution of the consciousness that I talked about in the Sky Show in so many episodes, it's really, really important, folks. Let, let's carry on because this is going to get really much deeper uh, seeing as we have our, our expert here today with us. <laughs> All right, so look at this. Explain this one. I think we've just explained it, but just go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Greenland. <laughs> on the uh, on the right-hand side, that's the big one. That is the map that you see in school that shows Greenland almost identical to Africa in scope. But if you go on the far left, Gall Peters, that is exactly, you know, that is the proportion. That is what correct. And it shows you the disparity and... Uh, it also shows you again what they won't, what they won't reveal to you. Yeah, you know this is just a simple school map, and they won't even show you this. And so when I go to people and I say, "Look, the the world isn't what you think it is. As far as it being a globe, there are some really big problems with it." it you, you people say, "Oh well, you know why would they hide that from us?" It's like, are you kidding? They won't, they won't even show you what your own country looks like. Don't, don't tell me what they won't show you regarding the globe. Right. And look, I mean, imagine the attendance in a classroom if, 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 for example, let's say you and I are the professors and we're doing this. Can you imagine? This is what's interesting. All right. Yeah. Let's know the information. Let's people, let, let people find out the truth for themselves. But we have yeah. to invigorate that, that sort of thinking out of the box. So, yeah. in, you know, in, in summary, the, the, uh, the Peters projection, as you can see here, is on the left and the Makeda projection is on the right. The one on the left shows the accuracy of the size of the continent. The one yep. on the right is the old one. Can we say that this was basically brought in by the church 
Do you want to introduce that right now? Uh, I mean, it was absolutely it was, but I mean, it, yeah, it was it was the church, it was the uh, you know the royalty, you know, it was the very you know the the people that were heavily involved in trade. Yeah, I I understand the Mercator map was easy from a shipping point of view, you know, shipping routes, but sooner or later you got to change it to to the you know to show what it accurately is, right. and they just wouldn't do it. It was like you know what. We're going to stick with the status quo, and we're going to stick with it for hundreds of years. And you know, scientists were going out of their heads. You know, yeah. especially once you know the Gall Peters thing. It's like, yeah, I know it freaks people out, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, right. yeah, get it in there, freak people out right away. But it, you know, it yeah. doesn't take long, and then they adjust to it. Yeah, I mean, look, I f I freaked out some people the other day, Mark, when we when I talk about uh, uh, the German wings flight crash in Europe. Huh. Yeah. And yeah. and how I'm actually bringing it back to what happened with CERN on yep. that morning and how the CERN had a mishap. It fired out an electromagnetic pulse that they're calling was a uh, kind of a, uh, a circuit gone bad. And it literally changed the frequency uh, of the magnetics in that general area. And this Airbus, who, which is very, very sensitive to electronics, actually caught that wave and literally had a huge emergency failure. And then they had to concoct uh, this story, which yep. has been changing uh, in, in the news. But yeah. again, it sounds bizarre because people have never heard about Einstein-Rosen bridges, for example. Yeah. But Dr. Stephen Hawking talks about them in his book, The Universe in a Nutshell, and he gets a lot of credibility. Uh, but when it's, you know, somebody that's different, you sort of have to build up your credibility. And I really take off my hat to you in, in doing this over the last uh, eight, eight weeks. Uh, yeah. You know, you, you've got to be humble, but you've also got to be proud that you, you know, you're doing this. Yeah. So tell me about this. What's this? Uh, what am I looking at? Ah, the UN flag. Very important. Because the UN flag, which was uh, finalized in 1946, two things with this map, well, they're very, very interesting. One is is that how the continents are laid out are laid out exactly the same way that are on the USGS map of the world, yeah. circular map of the world, called the azimuthal equidistant. And also, it is the exact same map used by the Flat Earth Society. Yeah, and the and the International Flat Earth Research Society, and the other thing that's interesting about this map is that there's no Antarctica on it, and that sticks out to me like a sore thumb. It's like, okay, is is it implied in the outer ring? Is it implied in the wreaths that are on the outside? Because ah. you know, for me, I think that's much more telling. This giant, massive, you know, ring around the entire uh, entire flag. Yeah, but, well, yeah. the United Nations, Mark, does say that there are seven continents. So that would have to set, that would have to infer that they do know about Antarctica. Of but course. the very fact that they don't put it on the map, or like mm -hmm. you say, they infer that it's that uh, most wider outer band. Uh, but they but they don't even say that. That's no. just it. I was looking for it. I was thinking, okay, is it implied? And yes. they don't even mention it. So yeah, it's a, it's an interesting, interesting flag. Yeah, and you know why didn't United Nations choose the Makeda projection if that's the one being taught? There you go. So it it you know, folks, look, it, it it's kind of like, Mark. I'll just change the subject real quickly. I yeah. I had a speeding ticket once. All right, okay. and I think it was like ninety one and a sixty five. I was a bad boy that day. Wow. And I had to go to court and prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the car that they got was actually not me. All right. So basically, I came in with all of these slides and this three fold out thing. It was like a, you know four feet high. And I proved beyond a reasonable doubt that it could have been another car that was racing with me. Now, okay. he was going much faster. So my point was, as I said to the judge, honestly, I said, yes, I was speeding, but I wasn't going that speed. There was another car. And what I had proved to the judge beyond a reasonable doubt that there's a slight chance that the cop had picked the wrong car and I got off. And so going back to what we're talking about now is we have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that something is missing here. Something yeah. is not correct. Like we can't say, 
with 100% certainty that we know the exact shape of Earth. We are beginning a new journey of consciousness to discover this. Agreed. All right. But we can't say with 100% until we really have maybe people going out to space or people are going out to Antarctica and crossing that line or something yep. like that. Yep. So let's go on. What's this one? Uh, ah, that is the official Flat Earth map, which is, if you look in Wiki, uh, under the Flat Earth Society, you will, you'll see it down there ways, but it shows, you know, the very same thing like you would with the UN flag with the continents clustered at the center, and then what happens on this map is Antarctica is literally stretched all the way around the entire map, so it becomes this giant wall of, of, uh, circle of frozen continent. Now, what also is interesting about this map is... It is absolutely identical, with the exception of the color, of the azimuthal equidistant map, which is used by the USGS, which is the United States Geological Sur Survey. And, yeah, there you go, the United Nations uh, flag as well. But the USGS map is considered perfectly fine. It was proposed a thousand years ago by a, guy, a Persian scientist named Al Biruni, and it is considered a, a legitimate map. But this map here, the, the one used by the Flatter Society, is considered utter lunacy. It is considered crazy because the, the USGS will say, well, that map is, uh, um, uh, it, it, is, it can't be interpreted literally. Right. Whereas their map is, you know, is, is, is just a representation. You know, it's just a top-down view. Wow. Wow. In the chat, Mark, uh, Diversity Network is saying, could the UN be the same as Big Brother or One World Government? Apparently, General Pirius says that the laurel wreath around the, uh, uh, the flag of the UN depicts victory <laughs> and, and the concentric circles depicts the occult. We, we have seen some things that the UN logo uh, can be depicted through the occult but that may be too much conspiracy i don't know what's it, your view it, on it that? might be it's true that the un flag is divided into exactly 33 sections and i don't think that should be lost entirely because you know 33 is a very important number in yep. in certain circles um the azimuthal map and the flat earth map here you know it's divided into i, I don't know there's got to be over 100 there yeah but uh um but yeah it's 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 very possible absolutely now, talking about the flat earth map, which we see in front of you, are you part of the flat earth movement? Because I know there's, there's two things, right? There's the flat earth society and then there's the international flat earth research society. What's the difference? Officially, okay, the, the, the flat earth society, which I, I'm, a, I'm a card carrying member of, and that's really part of the reason I you know, went down this journey last, starting last year. Um, I think that's based, I think the guy is based out of Hong Kong right now, but I think he originally lives in London. Uh, the Flat Earth International Research Society is its own group, which was started by Eric Dubé fairly recently. And it is, they, they share similar things, yep. but there, there are disagreements when it comes to ha how they, uh, I, it's hard for even me to get it into yeah. exactly what exactly, you know, are we talking about the, the people's front of Judea or the Judean people's front? You know, if you remember the, your yes. mind. Yes. Yeah. So, so the differences go back to religious things. Uh, well, no, 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 no. That was no. I was just saying it, that that's a Monty Python. Oh skit yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right. Missed where you, you there. can't really, you know, the, you're going to have to ask them what the differences are in between them. Uh, yeah. You know, there's definitely some dissension. You know, they are absolutely two separate groups, and they don't see eye to eye. Yeah. Well, this Eric um, Dubai, who you say has founded the International Flat Earth Research Society, is calling you yes. a disinformation agent. He is. That's pretty we, strong. Uh, it is strong, and again, I'm not going to say anything bad. I am never going to say anything bad about Eric. Yeah. Uh, he was one of the guys I followed along with Matt. Yeah. Uh, he and I disagreed. The, the The real point of contention was that he and I, he he asked me, he said, look, when you mentioning the moon, he didn't like me mentioning a, a very, very popular YouTube guy called Crow777. He, 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 you know, I granted Crow's not a flat earther guy, but he said, don't, you know, you really shouldn't mention it. And it's like, look, I love that guy's footage. And I think if you want to put doubts about the moon in people's heads, yeah. that's the guy you point to. And he's going, you really shouldn't do that. And that's it just escalated from there. But, yeah, uh, you know, his, I, I'm. Yeah, his main point was that uh, he wanted you to. Well, so so I researched this. He said that he wanted you to say 
when you were speculating or when you were theorizing of something that you weren't entirely sure about? Uh, yeah, and again, for me, it's, it's it's the details, you know, that that don't. It, what I'm trying to tell him is like, look, let's get from point A to point B. Yeah, you know, it, we we use the same ground map as far as I know. So you know, don't there should not be dis dissension between he and I. Absolutely, right. I, right. Well, he, let, let's put he, that out there to uh, uh, yeah. to Eric. Eric, uh, you know, I'd be more than happy to have you on the Sky Show also. Uh, to you know, say the, the, the things that need to be said from your point of view. But I think what's really important, Eric, um, and if I may say this to you, sir, is that we, we need to come to some kind of an agreement here because this could be absolutely groundbreaking and we don't need to call each other names. We need to be professional about this. Uh, so let's, let's move on there. Uh, so that's just uh, one thing I wanted to do this evening. Uh, so, you know, let's carry on, Mark, because this is getting, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to build up the, the, the sort of the intensity here. Okay. Okay. So we got the flat earth. We, we know about the United Nations flag being flat, showing this as flat. What yep. is this? This is a model and it's, it's not a perfect model and, you know, there is no perfect model yet, but it's kind of an interesting hybrid between the purest flat earth, you know, because uh, if you're a pure flat earth guy, you think that it's as flat as a coin. Yeah. I don't, th I don't personally think it's as flat as a coin. I think there's some bumps here and there. I definitely don't think it's a globe, but I don't think it's as flat as a coin. But on top of being flat, it's also enclosed like in, you know, what you're looking at here, a giant Truman show. Yeah. Where, the, you know, the stars and the planets are projected kind of on the inside but the sun and the moon are actual real objects that you know go in a circle above it yep yeah and yep. uh it's it's an interesting thing also that it's white on the edges you know because it's been speculated that antarctica goes on for a long long ways further than than we think it does right right well you know there's some very interesting uh people out there including uh, Admiral Byrd, B-Y-R-D. Yes. You've said yep. a lot about him. Uh, yep. Back in the 50s, he was given literally carte blanche by uh, the, the U.S. government to go to Antarctica. And then yep. he came on the TV almost in a weirded out state saying, yes, we've got a lot of uh, minerals to, to bring back from Antarctica and there's a lot going on there. And, and who was the man that went to Antarctica and then he sort of went, he says he went through what's called another dimension, and there was a tropical area. Do you remember the name of that book? Same, same, same guy. Say, well, I mean, there's there's some old stories about that. Okay, you know, uh, you know, old myths, and you know about you know from Vikings, and you know, I think it was the the some of the Nordic people. But Admiral Byrd is more known for you know that I dug into it and just kind of stumbled upon the Antarctica part by accident. He was more known for the Hollow Earth theory when he went up to the North Pole in 1926 when he flew up there, and the legend goes, you know, that he, he you know he went into a chamber you know, towards the North Pole that housed an entirely different civilization and that was a tropical area and it was, yeah. you know, full of a race of giants and, you know, that he, that he was allowed to leave. And, um, you know, it interesting was, you know, he never went back to the North Pole. At that point, you know, he only spent from 1928 until his dying day in 1957, all his time was spent down in Antarctica. Right. And, and you know, something for, as I say, again, to everybody out there, Keep with us, keep an open mind, and look up something called Einstein Rosen Bridge, R O S E N, because it's essentially something that the government has kept really secret. This is what's coming out as an electromagnetic scientist. I can back this up that they do exist. Uh, right now, there's extreme interest in the Gulf of Aden. Mark and I were talking before the show how almost 25 or 26 different countries' militaries are grouping, grouping navally near or around the Gulf of Aden because there seems to be some type of vortex developing there. And this goes back to all kinds of things about Egypt, how uh, there are vortexes and sort of gateways on Earth uh, whereby you can actually access different dimensions. And this goes towards people too. People can access higher dimensions through higher levels of awareness. Uh, there's movies about it. There's actually people that are dying. There's, there's great books out there, isn't there, Mark, about people that are dying, even MDs that have written books about they, they, they die and then they can see themselves 
on the surgery table. There's a lot we don't understand. Oh, yeah. But I think when you bring this all together, what I feel is clairvoyantly critical here to understanding is that when we get the eventual shape of planet Earth, we may not necessarily be able to put it on a piece of paper. It may involve so many more higher dimensions the higher we get in the atmosphere, and that's what's going to be the real trick, I think. Yeah, Um, yeah, you may not be able to draw it at all. (laughs) Yeah, it may just be really, really complex. So, all right, let's discuss something that's true to my heart. I fly a lot, probably about Mm -hmm. 300,000 kilometers a year, and I take a lot of different flights, and you can see all these green paths is the annual and, and, and no, actually, I don't think it's annual. I think it's daily. Yeah, I think that's daily. Daily number of flights. And yep. look at the difference in the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. There's yep. incredible. And I'm down here in Uruguay. I don't know if you see that little green dot here. That's even Buenos Aires. Yep. And south of there, there's almost nothing. Some days you can't even get a flight out. But look yep. at the number of lines in the southern hemisphere. Talk to me about this. What's really going on? The Southern Hemisphere is uh, an enigma, in my opinion, and it's been something that has been hidden for a while. You want me to go into the, yeah. the, the, the lack of nonstops? Yeah. There was something that I found. It was a German guy that first you know, put a YouTube video out, and he, what he was saying was he's going, he's going, why can't I get any nonstops between certain countries you know, in, the, um, in the Southern Hemisphere? Yeah. And I thought that was really strange it was going, you know, because he's going almost 90, you know, 95% of the flights down there are connections. And he goes, they're weird connections. They, they bounce you all over the place, and it right. didn't make any sense. Right. And so I started researching it, and, and yeah, he was absolutely right. There are – most of them do bounce you around – you know, you'd think that like going from South America to, uh, you know, somewhere in Australia, which is, uh, should be a straight shot, 7,400 miles, you'd think that, you know, it, you'd, you'd get, you know, nonstops all the time like they do up in the Northern Hemisphere, but that's not the case. And when you go, they bounce you, you know, they send you up to the Middle East or they'll send you to San Francisco or Los Angeles and it didn't really make sense. But then the, the German guy put it on a flat map, he overlaid it on a flat map. And the flight paths made perfect sense, you know, that um, uh, that they became much, much straighter. So instead of really, really harsh angles yep. the, on, a, on the azimuthal map, they became very, very, you know, just shallow dog legs at best. Right. And that was that was fascinating to me. Wow. Well, here's a site called uh, plainfinder.com. And all of the uh, red and orange dots there or pictures of planes are the current positions. And you can look at this site 24-7. Yep. For some reason, and I think I know why, the U.S. delays the plane positions by five minutes. They probably don't yeah. want some... Well, you know what it yeah. is, Mark? They probably don't want some person like, uh, you know, Islam or, you know, the uh, whole yeah, story yeah. about there firing a missile, yeah. right, yep. at a yeah. certain... So delaying at uh, five minutes is, is plenty. Yeah, right. I mean, I look, we, we delay it even... Uh, I think 10 seconds uh, here. So, for example, if you were to say the F word, uh, the producer would immediately take you off the air before you even came on the air. So <laughs> let's not okay. try that, all right? <laughs> I will not say it. <laughs> but the point is, is with the planes too, the same thing. Now, look at the south. I'm going to move your picture up. I've been watching this for hours and hours and hours and days and days and days. Yep. There's no plane in the South Pacific, even with the Sydney Chile connection, it will never show it, Mark, in the middle of the South Pacific. Nope. Those planes will be disappeared as soon as they get about 150 miles, 200 miles offshore. Anything in the Southern Hemisphere is, is disappeared. And uh, it, is, it is an interesting, interesting thing because, you know, and, and I've actually read articles, you know, recently. People say, oh, no, it's a GPS thing, right? I'm going, really? Because look at the Northern Hemisphere. That o- those oceans are crowded, and as far as I know, you know, there's there's no reason why there should be such a difference between the northern and southern hemisphere. But for me, the the, the difference was obvious, and that was they are trying to mask that because the southern hemisphere on a flat map, you know, a flattish map is becomes way becomes elongated. It right. becomes stretched on the outside, so the distances become exaggerated, and the only way you can hide that is if you hide the flights themselves. Right, yeah. right. Now, uh, Diversity Networks has said most flights over China are zapped out of tracking sites also. Yeah, China, yeah, I know. 
the same, it used to be the same way with Russia too. And as a matter of fact, I look at some of some of Russia. That's that's also true. But and and that still wouldn't make sense though for the Southern Hemisphere. I mean, South America, that's fair game. Africa, you know, there's, well, especially there's when we're talking about Qantas, right? Oh I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Why, why would yeah, Qantas be disappearing? from Sydney or Auckland to, to Santiago. Now, Diversity Networks also said London to Tokyo, for example, only part of the flight is shown. Yeah. Um, and, and one of these days, they're going to fix this. They, you know, they have to, and, and, and which is why I put it at the end of my, the video, and I said, look, people, you know, people were giving me crap saying, well, you know, you shouldn't have said anything. It's like, why not? You know, let's get it out there. And that way, yeah. if they do patch this, you know, software wise, you know, come up with a workaround, then, you know, we at least can catch it. So he's also saying, well, what are the realistic chances that the Earth is flat at this point? I mean, and, and how hard is it to convince somebody that it could be or is? It, you know, again, it, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to come out here and say, look, it's absolutely flat. Right. What I'm saying, though, is it is way flatter than it is a globe. Right. Way, you know, you know, as far right. as that, you can throw the globe model, that perfect sphere that yep, we see, yep, yep. That see on Google Earth, you can throw that away. Yeah, well, 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 that's right. So, so the first premise is we're saying, look, something is really wrong here. We've been lied to. Right? Yes. I think more yeah. people are going to do that. Second premise is we may not necessarily be saying that it's exactly flat. We may be saying, like General Pirio has said, maybe it's kind of like a Frisbee or a bent, yeah. a bent Frisbee or, a, or sort of a squished pea. Yeah. But maybe what I'm coming out with after seeing 30, 40, 50 hours of all this stuff, Mark, is yeah. maybe it's a multi-dimensional uh, planet and a, and a living space sure. that is connecting other views so that we've got fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh dimensions. And depending on the angle, you know, up from space, maybe it looks completely different and this is what i'm trying to wrap my mind around now look i've flown this flight from sydney hopefully this shows right now from it does sorry from the sydney to santiago all right and i tried to stay awake i remember seeing a lot of ocean but on the flat earth and the united nations flag map uh it literally takes you over central america uh california oregon and then across the pacific Yep. Uh, and some people on the web are saying, no, this is too far. It would, <laughs> the, the plane would have to be flying at like 1,200 miles an hour for it to make that journey in 12 hours or something. And to, to my point, uh, there's a video that came out recently. Anyone who's listening to this, look up something called Plane Routes Exposed. I did not do it. Somebody else did it. And it is brilliant because it's showing – a bunch of flights that even though they show that they're nonstop, they aren't nonstop. They're, they have hidden refueling things, yep. you know, uh, stations along, along the routes, and they just don't tell anybody. And you're absolutely right. That route right there should not be done in, in the amount of time that it takes. Although, if you're cutting across the middle, it's going to be a lot closer than trying to go around the edge. Because if you try to do that Australia flight and go around the ocean, it'd be this wide, wide arc, and you'd never yep. make it. You'd, ne you'd never make it, even in a long-haul jet, I don't think. It'd be yeah, kind of too close. Yeah, it's, 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 it's very, very complex. Very, very yeah. complex. Yeah. And, you know, on this map, this basically goes to the ancients, religion, uh, cosmology. Explain to us a little bit about this. This is a literal interpretation. I mean, it's not the most advanced graphic in the world, but it's going to have to do. Yeah. Of, you know, the, all the religions, and, and it's, I really opened my video series with this. You know, every, it wasn't just all the, the big five religions, you know, uh, Judaism, Hinduism, uh, Buddhism, Islam, and Christianity. All cultures, all tribes, all, any, every culture at one point for the first 4,000 plus years of our civilization believed in this model. Yep. Whereas we were sitting on some sort of roundish, disky thing that was covered over the top with, you know, in this particular version you're looking at here, it was in Genesis in, in Christianity right. called the firmament, which yeah. was a solid structure. Yeah, this and is in the on, Bible, correct? Yeah, yeah. Genesis 1, uh, uh, forgive me, those uh, Bible scholars out there, I think right. it's 1, um, chapter 1, verse 7. Yeah, I think. Okay, and uh, it it says that the sun and the moon are underneath, you know, the firmament, and the stars are underneath, yeah. and everything is contained in this thing, and yes. it is separated mm -hmm. the waters from the waters. Yep. But every culture had their own version of this, and yes. nobody they were all in agreement. Yes. and this 
pretty much carried through all of history until about 500 years ago, and then it all went sideways. Yeah, at 1592 it, with Copernicus. Uh, yeah, by the time they implemented, I mean, his initial thing was proposed in 1514, but it really doesn't matter because yeah. it took, you know, it took longer to get things up and moving back then. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, look at this, though. So basically somebody would say, all right, so on a flat earth, how do you get seasons? Why is the south going through autumn when the spring is in the north? Because on, a, on an enclosed system, temperature is extremely easy to manipulate. People, you know, you the, the sky is just are, are really just placeholders for yep. what's happening on the ground mm -hmm. uh think of all the temperature things that are involved on the ground and if you weren't thinking about even on a globe it, it would work but on a, in an enclosed system think of the underwater conveyor system the jet stream uh the entire magma system yep. you know underneath that yeah you're there talking my so language many, now mm -hmm. yeah there's so many different ways to manipulate temperature uh you know for people that you know refer to a car uh you have a car seat heater you have the air conditioning system yeah you have the windows you have the sun coming through you know the uh, right. the windshield yeah. there are a lot of different ways to affect temperature and if the system is you know 8,000 plus miles wide you can separate you know entire regions you know very very easily when it comes to weather manipulation yeah and look let me tell you two things just so the whole audience knows too global warming is a big farce I've been studying that for 27 years yeah. so you know again look at what's right over my shoulder here how do we know what we're told is true I can tell you global warming and this is my true expertise, it's all false. And they've misled the public for years and years and years by uh, changing data, manipulating data, data. and I will not sign off to any uh, IPCC document stating it's global warming. Also, all about the ice melt. That is geothermal. It is nothing to do with temperature above. If you if you get, uh, let's say, you know, ice in a in a mug and you, you with some water and you watch it melt, it is going to melt from the bottom up, and that's why when the fissures open at the bottom of the uh, the ocean, that is the uh, reason why the heat comes up and melts the ice. It's uh, so so again, you know, we're told all these things, but it, it's it lies. And yeah, just, yeah. It to, to your point, though, that image that was over your shoulder, that globe, yeah. you know, for those those people out there, it's like, look, and I know, believe me, it's an it's an affront to what you were conditioned with. But yes. how do you know? How do you know that's where you live? If NASA is the only ones you have to rely on, right. because they they are military. And yep. if you think for a second that the military wouldn't hide something from you for yep. your own good, yep. you got to think again. Well, this is it. I mean, look, people are figuring out 9-11, like I said earlier, and a lot of people know that it was that it was not what they, they'd they said, you know, about seven passports coming down in the pages and they find this and, and, and you know, we've got melted steel, yeah. um, you know, and, and so even, what, 14 years to the date, uh, almost, we still, in the public realm, quote unquote cannot figure this out why building yeah. seven came down so this is Agreed. the consciousness folks this is what's going on we are waking up to all of the lies being given to us and we've got to get together experts in science computer graphics like mark and people <laughs> that are opening their mind uh wanting to know what the truth is Look at this one, Mark. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's incredible. Uh, this yeah, is that's called a great ancient shot. cosmology. Yep. And you can't see all this, but again, it's more complex showing this. Now, you see these different layers in gray. I think that this is different dimensional uh, windows where you actually yeah. have holographic sequencing. Now, look that one up. That's a, that's a, that'll take you down an Alice in Wonderland tower. Um <laughs> You know, the, the you know what my view on this is, is if I may share it with you, Mark, is I think probably the planet is more like a human eye shape. And Very the reason much so. is, is because we've got this golden phi ratio and Fibonacci sequence, which is, which is explaining how the universe is all mathematics. Yeah. And the human eye is an incredible shape that has this Fibonacci golden phi ratio 1 to 1.618. Look it up, everybody, if you don't know what I'm talking about. But there are tons of things that talk about sacred geometry. There is things that talk about vortices and portals, uh, zero spin energy, electromagnetic waves, 
all of this was never in your high school uh, books, was it? That wasn't mine. No. Oh, no. Lord, no. No. And look no. at this. I... Just a case in point. This is what I did. Uh, my doctor of science in was this is from the journal of anonymous sciences and it's all about the planetary grid system and all of those numbers uh just to the, that blue triangle or pyramid just to the right of florida is the bermuda triangle and we've gotten since well since the beginning of time almost tons of planes and airplanes that have suddenly disappeared and then you look at the coral castle in florida to talk about how a man in, from, I think it was Romania or Bulgaria, literally got 33 ton stones out of coal and built a castle using levitation techniques. Yeah. There are laws on the planet, folks, that is just going to blow you away. And this is what I'm asking you to look at, all of this different stuff. Then, Mark, you know, there's ley lines yep. um, that connect different points of electromagnetic energy. And these actually, when they shift can cause dimensional shifts. We still don't know where MH570 is. Now, obviously, the the easiest thing to do, right, is to say, well, the military brought it down, it landed on the island in the Indian Ocean, blah, 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 blah. But what a lot of people are not realizing is the laws of physics and the laws of geometry are not being talked about. Look at this one. Earth uh, represented as a star tetrahedron. If yeah. you look up the flower of life and you go to a, a guy who's very famous called Melchizedek, he talks about how we are part of this earth macabre. And this is the reason why I'm mentioning all this is I think that this has a lot to do with the real shape and intensity and frequency of the planet. And here's putting it all together. And then I'm going to turn it back to you. That okay. This is called the unified field. And it shows how our own chakra system with seven or more chakras in our planet go and connect into like a grid system of the consciousness of the living flow of the universe. And it's very hard to talk about because sometimes even in English, we don't have the exact words. They have them in Sanskrit or they have them in the Tibetan language. But you notice on the top of this, Mark, what do yes. you see? It's a gridded system. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like I'm a sorry. It's like yeah. a ceiling. Yeah. That's and very, so that's we're excellent. in this box. And, you know, what I see in this is it's like CGI rendered. Somebody yeah. once told me that we actually live in a sort of a pixelated, computerized image where if you break it down, it's kind of like the TV. You know, just the dots are much smaller. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you know, that was one of those arguments in Star Trek, which I would I would debate with friends that you know, and that is holodecks, you know, from Star Trek: Next Generation. Holodecks don't really work unless they're really, really big. Yeah, because if it's if it's too small, you know, you have people that you know stretch the system and then it and then it fails. But if it's really, really big, you can do all sorts of fun stuff. And uh, you know, yeah. So in in this case, is it possible that our enclosed system? you know, has a mechanical aspect to it. You know, it could it be one giant holodeck? Absolutely it could. But if it was, you wouldn't have to make it a globe. That's what makes it the best part because no holodeck is ever, you know, ever, I think in science fiction, was ever made out of a globe. That's correct. And also in physics, you wouldn't need to have it to be 3D in an actual yeah. hologram because that would actually cancel out itself. I mean, a hologram is, I mean, I remember back in the 80s, it was very expensive. You could actually get a picture of something like uh, a giraffe head or uh, a globe, and it would be coming out at you. And, you know, in 1980, when I was 11 years old, I was like, whoa, that was cool. <laughs> but the whole thing with the hologram is that it, ex it explains that crystal structure of the universe and yeah. how things like Stonehenge, Giza, the Inca pyramids, and so many other points, like I just showed you uh, back uh, a while here ago. Let me just get to that again, because it's important that people see this here. All of these points are a very strong magnetic vortex. And you know what's really interesting, Mark? This is going to blow you away if you want to do some research. I'll show you oh, with you. Okay. 90% of all plane and ship disappearances have happened on or around those points. Wow. 
And so what we're getting at here is that the planet seems to have a very strong uh, torsion uh, field in that the electromagnetics can expand and shrink very quickly and they can actually cause many wormholes. And so when we're talking about the shape of the Earth, it might even morph at the edges or during those transitional spots where you see those high uh, changes in the mag magnetics. Sure. And now even researchers are going back and showing that disappearances actually happen when the sun emits a unnatural or a different electromagnetic energy. I mean, this kind of stuff just boggles your mind, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's fantastic. Um, I, I, if if you don't mind, I would you you talked about the Coral Castle guy yes. down in Florida, which is fairly close to that one thing. Um, somebody brought this up to me in an email the other day, and I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to confirm it, but it sounds pretty great. And that was that he had a, a letter to to some scientist saying, you know, talk to me if if you want to know the true the true path of the sun and the planets through the sky. Oh. And I thought, and I thought that was really interesting. It's like, really, because what you know, what, yeah. what 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 would be the true path? Yeah. But anyway, yeah. And look, a lot of people are fearful of getting out information. I actually myself am not fearful. I am vibrating in the love frequency, which yeah. is very very high. It actually gets rid of disease. This is what I learned in my alternative medical uh, studies. And look mm -hmm. at this, talking about the mathematics of the universe. This is called the Fibonacci sequence. It's in all of nature. It's in uh, seashells. It's in the human body. Look it up. It's basically a mathematical sequence of when the next number plus the previous one adds up to the next one. So it's zero, and then it's one. So when you add one and zero, you get one. And then when you add one and one, you get two. When you add two and one, you get three. So it's zero, one, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen, twenty-one. And this Fibonacci math mathematical sequence mark actually is computated in this spin. So if I showed you the picture of, let's say, the Andromeda galaxy, which we still don't understand what it really is and what's really going on, it's sure. the same shape of, as a hurricane. And that is all Fibonacci uh, theory. Now look at this, you know, from back from the ancient days of yin and yang, doesn't this ring a bell as to the night and the day on the flat earth theory yeah. yep. about you know the, the the night and the day the dark the sun and the light. yeah the sun and the moon moving around the the circle yeah 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 it's it's really really unique look you know folks let me let me come back here uh, there are there is an awakening happening at a rapid pace mark just told you that he's only been doing this 8 weeks granted he's begun it he's began a new path he's a noble man for taking that stance he may not have all the answers but if you want to go and really open your mind and look at this, type into this into any search engine. I like Duck Duck Go, right? Rather than Google, because they don't track you supposedly. And this is called sure. 100 Proofs: The Earth Is Not a Globe." Let's yeah. uh, in the next couple of minutes that we've got left, Mark. Let's um, let's really talk about other points that you wanted to talk about. Um, that you know we we, we just want to hit upon. Sure, sure. Um, you know, by the time I got to, and I don't know if you got a chance to watch all the clues, but yeah. for me, it was kind of a, a very, very quick, intense journey. And that was, by the time I was getting to number 10, you know, hiding God, and I was really trying to turn it into more of a message, because initially it was, okay, here's how I would design an enclosed system. Here is, you know, some of the, some of the clues that I've found that, that, it make it make it very very real to me yeah. but by the time i got to 10 hiding god i was trying to turn it into something positive and that was it would be spiritually and i'm not going to dig in too much into the metaphysical side of it yeah. but i think that the world would become a much much better place if this system was revealed so you know i even put you know the the feelers out to the government or people in power or whistleblowers yeah. or whoever it was saying look People say, well, you know, you're going to give me small world syndrome. You know, you, you, I became, you know, it's a great universe and now you turn it into a one-room apartment. And I go, no. One, it's a very big one-room apartment. Yeah. Two, it's very comfortable and it's very, it's, it's varied and it's beautiful. But if you know you're in, if you, if the world becomes enclosed, if it is revealed, we become all part of the same family, the same system. And we treat not just the world better, but each other better. 
And I, I, I don't know if there was a, a, a more clear message by the time I got to the end of it. It's like, look, yeah. you would act better. And it's like, oh, no, it's oppressive. It's a big brother thing. It's like, really? Yeah. Because why, why would you be making those bad decisions in the first place? Amen. You know? Amen and a woman to that, Mark. Listen, we're out of time. It's been a privilege. I'd love to have you back on. Uh, be happy and to be back. Let's go and research more and uh, let's get the people the answers they deserve. And thank you again. You're very welcome. I'm, I thank you for having me. All right, beautiful. All right, folks, that's it. Salutes from Montevideo and our guest. It's been a real privilege. We will be back and stay tuned next week. Ciao.